Hello, this is Dr. Alan Yim. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to harmonize a melody with triads in root position. So here you see I have a melody written out in the key of D minor. And there are going to be three steps that we take to do this. Here are the three steps. So we're going to write out all of the possible chords that could harmonize each melody note. That's step one. Step two, we're going to choose the starting and ending chords because usually we know what those are. And then three, we're going to try to fill in the rest of the chords with something logical, following a circle of fifths, if we can, avoiding diminished triads because we only use diminished triads in first inversion, and watching out that we don't write a parallel, so avoiding parallels. So let's begin with the first step, which is writing out all of the possibilities. Now, the first thing you could think of is each note could be the root of a chord. So let's take a look at the first one. We have an F. If it's F, then that chord is going to be in minor 3. I'm not going to write the chord symbol right now, but if I were, it would be, well, I'll write it for the first one. Now, the F could also be the third of the chord. In that case, it would be a D minor triad, D, F, A, or it could be 6. So that would be B flat D F. So just to show you what these, these possibilities are, this is what it looks like. Whoops. Okay. Now, there is a quick way to do this. This may seem a little bit daunting at first. I have to do this for every note? Well, you do, um, to be complete for now, but the way to do this is to first write across all of the chords that use these melody notes as roots and then as you can see here to get to the other two all we do is subtract two so each time you subtract two so three minus two is one and one well that's when we subtract we have to think that we're going down one seven six so to get to the other two below you just subtract two and this should go fairly quickly the other thing you can notice is over here we have the same note that we started with, F. So any F in this melody will be harmonized by the same chords. A, of course, in this case, would be 5. Subtract 2, we would have 3, or possibly 1. Bijou. Okay, 3, 4, 2. Now 2, remember, is diminished in minor. We're actually going to end up getting rid of that. Three again, I mean two diminished again. C sharp, seven. And remember that's a raised leading tone, so it's going to be the diminished version, and then one. Now I'm going to go ahead and subtract the ones, the two numbers, and put in the rest of them. Okay, so here we go. This is two, or it's seven. And we're going to use a harmonic minor, as you can see. So, that 7, this will be 5, this could be 6. Again, if I'm, I'm doing this rather quickly, but I'm just subtracting 2 each time. And uh, 7, 5, 5, 3, and then 6, 4. Okay. So we just completed now step one. I've written out all of the possibilities. Now I'm going to put a red line through some of these. All of the diminished chords, we cannot use these chords. Okay, and so that's, you can see if we, if we have the E as a note in the chord, we only have a choice of using five. So I might as well circle that. And if we have a G, we only have the possibility of using four as the chord. Once I just circled in green, we know. Now we're going to choose the beginning and the ending chords. Over here in the beginning, normally to establish the key, you would start with one. Now, could you start with three or six? The answer is yes. But most pieces, I would say the majority, not, not most, but more than half, usually begin with the tonic chord. Same thing when we get to the end of a section or a phrase, 
I would recommend ending with one. Other possibilities are five. That's the, the second most common chord to end with. Uh, but you have to continue on. All right, now, so we've just done step two. And actually, I can probably back up one chord here because we could see the, right here the choices between five and three. Well, we know we cannot go three one. That is not a progression that is makes any sense. Five three one would not be good. So five five one. That's a possibility. Now the last step we have to figure out the rest of the chords. We're going to try to follow the circle of fifths progression and to remind you that is three, six, two, diminish, which we won't use in this case, five, and one. So this is what it looks like in minor, possibly seven out at the end, but this is, this is basically it. So let's take a look at the possible, I'll, I'll put a little circle on where we are. Well, it's five blank five. The only possibility here is, is one. Now, don't be disturbed that we have a lot of fives and ones. This is pretty normal. Now, what about the next part? Could we use just one all the way across here? Could I just go one, 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 four? Yes, the answer is yes, but we would have no chord changes. So that's a little bit boring. Six looks like an interesting possibility here. So we can go six, four, five, one if I did this. Um, so we just have to make sure that we can get to the six. So I could make a long circle progression here. I could go three, six, four, five, one. That's sort of interesting. I could take the, the less interesting route and just go one, five, one, four, like that. I could take the really, really safe and boring route and just go one, 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 all the way across. We could go one, one, three, because remember, three can go to four. We could also go one, three, three. So there's there's quite a few possibilities here. Just to make it sound the most standard, and I'll try some, playing some other variations of this, I'm going to choose the circle progression. So let's go three, six, four, five, one. Now keep in mind that three is not that common, especially if you're in major. But here's what this sounds like. So, again, be careful that you don't create a parallel. So, for example, I wouldn't start out this with 3-5 because then you'd have parallel octaves. And you don't want to create parallel octaves, parallel fifths, or hidden octaves or fifths. Now I'm going to write the chord symbols. F, 6, B flat, 4, G, minor, A, D minor, A, and A, well, okay, when the chord doesn't change, we're not going to write anything. So, these are the, this is the bass line. Here, there is a danger. When you go from the 3 to the 6, notice F to B. If I wrote the bass like this, F to B flat, this would be hidden fifths. So this is where you have to be a little bit careful. We can fix this, of course, by changing the direction of the bass line. So when you write the bass line in, try to use contrary motion. So I can do it like this, F to B flat. If you don't, if you write it in the same direction, you have hidden fifths. So this is no good. But this, it's not great, but it's better, and it's not a, um, it's not a hidden parallel. When the soprano leaps is where you have to be careful. So same thing here with the G to the E. B 
because we're going to A, this also, we have to make sure that it goes in contrary motion. If it goes in the same direction, again, we'll have a hidden fifth. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little C in green here. The C means that we're moving, as you remember, in contrary motion. So again, wherever the soprano leaps, watch out for hidden parallels. And I think that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.